It's called National Geographic's Weird But True. Joining us now to talk about it, tell us all about it, is Chad Davis, the Deputy Director of Horticulture at Gardens by the Bay. And Chad, it looks like you are there right now. Yes, good morning, guys. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Tell us about Weird But True. Um, so Weird But True is a National Geographic exhibition that's really toward, uh, uh, geared toward kids having fun and learning and exploring. Brilliant. And for the benefit of our listeners, if you do have access to Facebook Live, jump on Money FM 89.3 now because Chad is there. He's at the Weird But True exhibition currently playing at Gardens by the Bay. Tell us a little bit more about what can families expect when they visit, Chad? Um, well, we've got interactive exhibits here. I'll walk you through. Hopefully you guys don't get too giddy as I walk through with my handphone. Um, <laughs> sure. You can see lots of kids here having fun already. Um, We've got some interactive exhibits in here where kids can learn about uh, uh, what it's like to stick your foot into quicksand. Um, um, a human who burped for 78 years consecutively. Um, <laughs> my my 12 year old son, my 12 year old son would love that one. <laughs> um, so these little guys here are running on a track that shows how far a kangaroo can jump in a single hop. Uh, we have. Lots of people testing to see how far they can jump as well. Mothers and fathers as well. Um, <laughs> rabbits can uh, see behind themselves without moving their heads because their their eyes are off to the side. Um, so you can step inside of this uh, little mirrored box and um, and see what it's like to uh, to envision yourself as a rabbit. This is great. Uh, this is great. Chad Davis, this. Deputy Director of Horticulture Gardens by the Bay, is coming to us live from the Weird But True exhibition currently playing at Gardens by the Bay. It explores facts and quirky figures taken from the National Geographic Kids magazine. Uh, tell us, Chad, what made you bring this exhibition to Gardens by the Bay? Uh, well, we've been in talks with National Geographic for a few years. Um, trying to figure out a way to um, um, blend our brands and our content together because we're really both about uh, entertaining and educating. Um, so that's really what we're trying to do. So we came up with this idea um, um, to do four different exhibitions over the next few years. Um, right. And so the first exhibition um, you have now, and just tell us, what are the, the I know it's, you said it's four, so tell us a bit about these four exhibitions that you've got coming up. Uh, so, each one will run for about six months. Um, we'll have one on sustainability. We'll have one that features uh, ghost orchids. Um, it's a, a rare plant that grows in the swamps of Florida. Um, it's the, the story that was inspired the book, The Orchid Thief. Um, and then we'll have another one on carnivorous plants um, are the plants at this point. And that should take us through um, about two and a half years. Wow, that is fascinating. And, and Chad, I, I believe this is happening in the cloud, the cloud forest uh, at Gardens yes. Bay. Is that correct? All these different. Yep, we're museums. we're inside of the Crystal Mountain in the cloud forest. We're on level four, so we're right in the heart of our uh, of our central display. So um, if you've been here before, it, it, mm -hmm, go ahead. Um, this is the area that used to have the large crystal display, um, the stalactites and stalagmites. We've uh, kept some, but we've really tried to activate and make this space more fun and inviting for our guests to enjoy. Yeah, and, and it's great to know that it is indoors, so no matter what the weather outside, especially for the for the real little ones uh, in this case, uh, that uh, it's it's easy for people to access and be comfortable as they're inside. Um, yep. You know, the Gardens by the Bay has had so many great exhibits. We, we looked at the, uh, the train exhibit, uh, the Orient Express that was there, and um, uh, of course the uh, Chihuly exhibit, uh, you know, it, it's quite surprising actually that you guys are doing such a wide range of sometimes not garden oriented uh, uh, exhibits. What's the thinking behind that? Um, we're trying to reach as big of an audience as we can. Yeah. Um, okay. So whether it is. <laughs> yep. Yep. I guess that's uh that wraps it up. 
Indeed, indeed. Well, and just tell us for the benefit of those listening who can't quite see the videos, you've got so many quirky facts on display. I mean, I like the things you've got vanilla telling us all about vanilla comes from a kind of orchid. About 420 million years ago, mushrooms, listen to this, mushrooms grew taller than giraffes. I mean, how do you display or show this kind of information? Um, well, you can see, can you guys see behind me, you have the giraffe and the mushroom in the skyline. Ah, oh, um, okay. The, yep. the kind of uh, behind the orange wall there. Yes. Um, and then right in front of me here, I have the vanilla plant. Oops, sorry, Janine. Wow. wow. Nice. Um, so nice. there are some that are flip panels, some that are TV screens. And oh, look here, I can see one of our uh, carnivorous plants. This is a pinguicula. Um, uh, it's flowering here after the first, first, uh, the first time. We just planted this about a month ago, and it's it catches the little, uh, uh, it's caught a little midge fly on here as well. I don't know if you can see. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have a little display of carnivorous plants here, talking about uh, um, some of their facts, some of their fun things. So even when it is not uh, explicitly plant related, we try to keep it. Uh, we try to bring a garden spin to it. Yeah, so, so just stay, the, stay on that plant for a second. Can you come back to that plant? So you're saying that one there actually catches flies. Is that correct? Uh, this plant right here, yes. This is a bladderwort or butterwort, a pinguicula, and there are um, um, tiny, tiny little um, like little tubercles um, that grab onto the insects and hold onto them, and they slowly break down and become food for the plant. Well, be careful you don't get too close. We don't want to lose you, Chad. It is carnivorous. But, uh, uh -huh. dude, you know, this isn't the little shop of horrors. I realize that. But uh, anyway, be, be careful of, uh, you know, whatever might uh, jump out at you. Yep. This is great. This is great. Audrey, too, is in the next right. exhibit. <laughs> um, the, how did the relationship with National Geographic Kids actually come about to, to bring this together? Um, like I said, we've been in talks with them for the last couple of years, trying to figure out a way to uh, collaborate. My CEO has, uh, uh, he grew up reading the magazine, and ha it always has a fond spot in his heart. When he was in the U.S., he went to visit their CEO, um, and they've been uh, um, chatting for a couple of years, trying to figure out how we can, how we can collaborate and what form that will take. Um, well, I so just I just we, jump in there, Chad, to say that you're already getting fans live on Facebook. Mike has said, great move to show Chad live at Gardens by the Bay. Better than the normal static conversations over Zoom. <laughs> That's a <laughs> message for all of us. Great all stuff. Right. Uh, so, right. Chad, just following on from that, I can see the children running around. It looks fantastic. What has the public response been so far? Um, I think people are really happy with it. This isn't an extra ticket. Um, um, you don't have to buy an extra ticket to take part in this. This is included in the general admission oh, to, the, uh, to the cloud forest. Um, and um, if you can hear all the little kids running around um, and see the smiles on their faces, you'll see that, uh, that um, I think people are really enjoying it. Um, I think we're seeing people spend longer inside of the conservatory here as well. Um, and that means they're having more 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 fun and more to explore yeah chad what's your favorite uh part of the ex exhibit there do you have one um yeah yep so it's these carnivorous plants these little uh these yeah. little uh, tanks um these are a lot of fun to set up they're a lot of fun to grow you can do these in your house they're pretty uh um they're pretty easy and the kids really love them um so if you want to set up a, a tank with your carnivorous plants you can visit something like our our plantsman fair that we have here um i believe it's going on today um, where you can come down and buy some uh, garden-grown plants nice. um, at our Bayfront Pavilion. And catch um, your flies. And, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. And, and I'll just say, finally, Chad, I, I have to say, kudos to you guys, because you would think that ordinarily in an exhibition like this, Glenn, if there was a, a value add, there'd mm. be an additional charge. Right. So I'm very impressed that you've made it a part of the overall uh, admission fee. What was the thinking behind that? Um, this is part of our 10th anniversary. Um, we are um, um, just coming up on our 10th anniversary in June. So we're celebrating this whole year and we're really trying to give the, um, 
give as much to Singaporeans as we possibly can. Um, last year, even though we're in the pandemic, we saw um, over 8 million visitors to the garden, and they're almost all Singa- – well, they really are all Singapore yeah, residents. Yeah, all Yep, um, sure. Yep, because we don't have tourists, and we are um, um, trying to solidify our role as a people's garden and really um, um, offer people a place – to go have some fun and recite and um, forget about the yeah. troubles that uh, that we follow us through our days. Indeed. You know, on Facebook Live, a couple of our fans uh, pin uh, Chia says, the flower that eats things looks so pretty. Uh, she says she also wants to try the quicksand uh, and uh, <laughs> other positive comments coming in. You know, I cannot believe it's been 10 years. I, I don't know. I can't speak for Neil, but I did uh, the original press tour prior to the opening of gardens by the bay when we were being shown all the different elements of the super trees and, and everything else. And I mean, even at that point to realize that the government had spent a billion dollars uh, on, on this garden was just incredible, but I, I can't believe it's a decade old already. I had a meeting with the, the lovely folks who run the, the, the shop, the gift shop, the gardens by the bay. They yeah. kindly put my book in there at the oh, time. Nice. Uh, and I can't believe that was a decade ago. I remember when the bookshop, the, the, the gift shop opened at gardens by the bay. I remember how busy it was. Yeah. And it's a testament to you guys, Chad, that 10 years on, looking at you behind, thanks to the exhibitions you're putting on, keeping it fresh, updating regularly. The place has never been more popular, Chad. Yes. Yep. Um, it's uh, quite exciting to be a part of. Um, it's, uh, it's one of the most amazing projects in the world, and I'm uh, lucky to have been a part of it since the beginning. I joined uh, in 2011. Oh, wow. Great. Uh, Rob Salisbury um, on Facebook Live, he says he loves the Flower Dome, and that, uh, Chad, you and your team have repurposed that level in a fun and, and a way that really adds as a bonus uh, to Singapore. Fabulous upgrade. And, Mike, um, um, this is real education, not just getting A's in school, A grades in school. And that is for <laughs> sure getting out there and, and seeing stuff uh, up close and personal. Fun. All right. Thank you, guys. Well, so for your people out there who are enjoying plants, we have uh, our jade vine is flowering for just a second time. Last year, it flowered with uh, just one of these big inflorescences. I don't know if you can see the size of my hand here. Yeah. Um, they're turquoise. Um, this time, uh, yeah. we've already had about 10 blooms on it, and there are, are more following. So this is one of my new favorite plants. Hmm. And, and sorry, just to reiterate, Chad, for our listeners, if you could just hold it on that plant again. Why is, why is this plant so special? Um, it grows in the jungles of the Philippines. Um, and it's um, just it got um, these amazing, like, claw-like flowers that shine, iridescent, uh, turquoise blue. Um, blue is a really rare um, uh, flower or rare color to be found in plants. Mm. Um, and these guys are just a lot of fun. Yeah, wonderful. Well, wonderful. I just want to say, Chad, you have been great fun on our show today. <laughs> your, your live feed from God is by the Bay has been so colorful, literally and metaphorically, so vibrant. I want to thank you for that. And Janine in the background who's been helping you. It's just been a breath of fresh air, Glenn, hasn't it? Yes, it certainly has. Thank Chad, you. thanks for being with us. Chad Davis, the Deputy Director of Horticulture at Gardens by the Bay. Everybody, get over there until the 31st of July and see National Geographic Weird But True. Uh, great fun. Thanks for being with us, Chad. Bye-bye, guys. All right.